I, I take great pride and honor in introducing the police officer Robert Salerno. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to start off with a quote that my partner that day had wrote to me. I'll never forget the events of that day, the sights, the sounds, the smells of that narrow hallway are forever burned into my mind. More importantly, four went in and four came out. Now it goes me. It was Monday, March 22, 2010, a beautiful, clear spring day, and I was assigned to patrol with my partner, police officer Robert Klein. At approximately 12.15 p.m., a 911 call originated from 3073 Park Avenue. Bronx, New York, that a female was being harassed by a male. While en route to this location, a second 911 call came that the male, who I'm now going to refer to as the perpetrator, had a black firearm and threatened to shoot the female, who I'm now going to refer to as the victim. My partner and I were just a few blocks away from that location and we were able to arrive at the scene within seconds. There, we met with two other officers, police officer Sean Fitzpatrick and police officer Danny Robbins. The four of us entered the building and were confronted by the victim. She was frantic and, un un and unable to speak English. A good Samaritan stopped by, saw the commotion, and offered to translate for the victim. She explained that the victim was a nurse taking care of an el elderly woman in an apartment, and that there, was, that there was a man in the apartment, perpetrator, with a black firearm and threatened to shoot her with it. With this information, we wasted no time getting to the second floor apartment. We entered the apartment, single file, guns drawn, senses heightened, and ready for the series of events that would soon unfold. The layout, the layout of the apartment was simple. You walk into a kitchen living area, and to your left was a narrow hallway with two bedrooms, two bedroom doors. Upon entry of the apartment, we heard one of the bedroom doors slam shut. We directed our attention to that bedroom door and stated, this is the police, come out where we can see you. We gave the command again and again and got nothing in return. The decision was final, that we entered the room and extract the perpetrator and effect an arrest. I was at the door, so I opened it, and upon entry, with no time to react, bang. I was shot first in my chest. I remember it like it just happened. I could see the black gun close enough to me that I could grab it with my own two hands. <clears throat> I could see the perpetrator's brown shirt, and I could see the look on my partner's faces. I could smell the round fired, and I kept telling myself one thing. Fire back, engage the target, you must survive. So that's what I did. I fired two rounds at the suspect, and then again, bang, bang. I was shot again, this time just below the vest, just below the bulletproof vest in my lower abdomen. This sent me crashing to the ground. Um, I, could not, I could no longer feel my right leg, nor could I move it. I knew at this point I had to endure some pain, and I knew I had to survive. I did the only thing I can do. I did it again. I engaged the perpetrator, this time with 14 rounds of fire. As I lay on the floor shot, not knowing the extent of my injuries, I pulled myself away from the door and did what I was trained to do. I grabbed my radio and shouted at the top of my lungs. I said I was shot, I could not feel my leg, and I needed help. As all this was transpiring, the three officers I was with acted nothing less than heroic. They too immediately engaged the target, fired at the threat, and radioed for help. Listen, in a situation like this, there's uh, life-threatening, adrenaline-fueled, there's no set game plan on what you're going to do. But these three guys acted as if they had a game plan and followed it through 100% precision. <laughs> From there, <clears throat> they dragged me out of the apartment and into safety. Safety happened to be the hallway outside of the apartment. From there, I was carried to the elevator by two responding officers and then taken out of the building as they were carrying me. Now, at this point in my career, was I no, at no other point in my career as a New York City police officer 
was I more proud to uphold the law and call myself a cop. There were hundreds of cops, EMS, and firemen who came to my rescue because they knew there was a cop who was in distress, a cop who was shot, and a cop who needed as much help as possible. From there, I was rushed to Lincoln Memorial Hospital where the doctors were able to save my life. I'm fortunate to be, I'm fortunate to be here, to be able to stand here today and give this speech to all of you. While many miracles have occurred during the road to recovery, I look forward to the day that I can return to full duty status with the New York City Police Department. As part of the NYPD, I'm a civil servant whose job is to protect the citizens of New York City. And what I did on, that, on March 22, 2010, I would do it all over again if I had to without hesitation. I'm honored to be presented with the James S. Brady Law Enforcement Award and its efforts for stricter gun control and the prevention of, of gun violence are beyond commendable. I offer my support in any capacity at all to anybody in this organization that could use me in any possible way. You also need to know I am personally affected by this cause. The firearm I was shot with was an illegal firearm. And furthermore, if it was never on the street to begin with, March 22, 2010 would have and may have turned out a little bit differently for me. Thank you all for listening.